So in this video, we're going to look at um, we're going to start looking at basically tools for solving differential equations using the power series methods. And to do that, first we need to have a quick review and an introduction to what are power series. So just to recall from your calculus uh, days uh, or your calculus courses, a power series in powers of x minus a is basically, as you see here, n equals zero to infinity is an infinite series. Uh, where cn basically is the uh, coefficient of the power series and uh, your powers basically emanate from this term x minus a to the power n and if x is equal and if a is equal to zero uh, we end up with this power series in x as you see here cn xn equals c0 plus c1 again the cn's are the coefficients of the power series now where we get interested in the power series is the ability of a power series to represent any function. Now for this, the power series of course must be convergent and must exist uh, for all x. Now you will recall that uh, you would have studied in calculus the Maclaurin series, Taylor series expansions and these basically these um, expansion methods allow us to write a function uh, like fx I've said here, uh, you know as a power series. So here, for instance, are typical well-known functions which can be with their power series representation. So the exponential x is simply 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed, cosine x, sine x, cosh x, uh, and that, you know, the two hyperbolics, log of one, uh, of 1 plus x and 1 over 1 minus x. And I, and I would recall, and if you do not recall these, then of course um, you may look at your calculus um, courses or you may look at calc 2 videos in, in my on my channel as well but uh, the main thing that you have to understand is and recall is that all these transcendental functions um, in fact any uh, function can be almost any function can be represented using power series so uh, that is the key idea that we need to um, uh, keep in mind just to help you re recall the Taylor series uh, okay looks like this uh, this is around the point x equals a and the Maclaurin series there we have it so you'll see the difference is that this is a series in x this is a series in x minus a around the point a so that's the Taylor series and the Maclaurin series just to help you recall so here we define something quite important uh, as we're going to be dealing with these uh, power series that is if the Taylor series have something called an analytic a function f is analytic or an analytic function uh, if the Taylor series of the function f converges to fx for all x in some open interval containing a, then we say that the function f is analytic at x equals a. That would re and essentially that means that the power series uh, that we have is a an accurate representation uh, of um, uh, the function that it represents. Okay, some properties of analytic functions. First of all, every polynomial function is analytic everywhere. Every rational function is analytical wherever analytic, sorry, wherever its denominator is non-zero. So of course, you know, that would mean like one over x is not analytic at x equals zero. But other other than that, it is analytical everywhere else. And another property, uh, if you take the sum of two functions uh, of both analytic at x equals a, then their sum is also analytic and their product uh, is also analytic as is their quotient f or g, as long as g of, g of a is not equal to zero, of course, uh, zero division being not allowed, as you clearly know. Now, next thing we want to look at is that the algebraic manipulation of power series. This is very important. Uh, so suppose we have these two power series, fx and gx, then the sum of these two is simply, as you can see, combined here, n equals zero to infinity, and the coefficient becomes a n plus b n. Provided, of course, and you can see the important thing is the counters both start at zero. Similarly, the product, as you can see, we're called the CN. Um, okay, and just explain in a second what CN is. But when we multiply the two series, we'll end up with something of this nature. And we can see there's a growing pattern here. CN is just A0, BN plus, uh, you know, this. So you can, you can do it for, for instance, uh, C0 would be A0, B0, as you can see. C1 would be A0, B1, A1, B0, okay? And there, there you can see confirmation of that. 
But so here's a nice example of multiplication. It's a very nice one. It explains this whole idea quite well. So you see, if you multiply sine x and cos x, basically this is the the uh, McLaurin series of sine x, McLaurin series of cos x. We multiply the two, and some algebra leads us to like x multiplied by one gives us x, and then minus one over x cubed, and then minus a half x squared. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, and anyway, as we continue, if we connect the terms, the x cubed coefficients, the x5 coefficients, the series boils down to this, essentially, which gives us basically after a little bit of playing around with these uh, terms, we end up with this situation. And what is this really? If you think about it, that basically looks uh, like sine of 2x. So we end up with half sine 2x. And we know this is the well known identity. Uh, sine uh, half angle identity sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x so you can see that that is actually shown here uh, by simply c looking at the power series of the two multiplying them and it ends up giving the result that we expect so that's a quick review and introduction to power series how we are going to be manipulating them and uh, and we'll learn more as we progress into the other videos where we in the next one where we start to look at how we actually use the power series method in a, to solve differential equations. So we'll stop here. Thank you so much.